Inkedink, 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 Wow! Sixteen hours so far of uh, the Basilathon. Going strong. Good evening. Good continued evening. Good long. And no, he's actually, he's not, he's not sleeping, he's not, uh, not sleeping, his eyes are just, you know, always kind of like, you know, kind of like this, because, because he's deep in thought, um, that's how he, that's how cats are, they're just constantly, um, in a constant state of, um, I'm with you, kind of, unless, um, something draws their attention, Basil. Okay. Okay. Well, I know he sees me. Because he, um... Always insists that I wear a red shirt, and even better yet, a red tie on top of a red shirt. Now, I'm not sure. Can you really... Can you see my... Can you see my head? My head's not red. My eyes are never bloodshot. You know that. Can you see... He twitched his right ears. Right ear, one of the land, two if I see. Right ear, yes. Left ear, maybe. There's no, there's no use of the word no in, in Basil's language. It's got, uh, as you know, cat language has, cat has, what are we up to now? 942,813 different words, concepts, ideas in cat. It's an ever, ever evolving language, just the same way as um, every other language is evolving. It adds, um, it adds new terms. It um, does everything except add uh, new sounds, because as you know, cat, two sounds, and that's it. Two sounds, but according to how you um, arrange them, combine them, reuse them. Overuse them. You have all uh, all those all those potential uh, words, thoughts, and ideas, and that's um, that's how it is with the cats. At any rate, so um, so we're continuing with um, our uh, Basilathon. Um, we've been going strong for sixteen hours. If you missed it, you missed a, a lot of stuff. We talked about a lot of things. Um, we watched and commented on, it seemed like about, uh, I don't know, 15, 15 or 20, something like that, more basketball games. But to recap, to recap the tournament, Basil, of course, we've been through 64 of the, uh, ultimately, 67 games in the, in the NCAA basketball tournament. Um, and Basil, um, Basil's picked them all right on his bracket. His bracketology is perfect. And as you know from previous shows, his bracketology is perfect because he's got it in. He's got another cat situated at the right hand of the left hand of the uh, left shoulder of God. He's got... Pope Francis's cat Basil, who's been um, giving him all the uh, all the all the picks, and uh, does it give you scores too? Does it give you? I know in football you have over and under, you have uh, point spread. Basil, no, Basil says that's um, nobody cares about how much you lose by. If you lose by a point, if you lose by twenty points, there's not there's not a lot of difference. There's a little bit, um, a little bit. Uh, in terms of um, 
comfort, bragging rights in terms of um, taking a little extra cat nap on the bench at the end of the game if your team's up by a lot, taking an additional bathroom break, litter pan break, if you will, um, if your team's down a lot. Because um, there's nothing quite as um, quite as uh, uncomfortable for a crowd of thousands of people than to watch um, than to watch some dude peeing on the floor. It just not, just not appealing. So at any rate, so um, so we've got we've got our basilathon uh, going on. We're we're raising money, and. Um, I'm looking at the tote board, and I don't see much on it yet, but we're, we're going to get there. We're going to get to that final number. And whatever number we get to will be matched by, I don't know, somebody. Somebody, somebody said they would match, they would do a matching uh, donation. So at any rate, so um, we're raising money. And our good friend, Stephen T. Colbert, um, apparently we watched and... We understood what it was all about. We watched as um, he talked about in one of his shows last week, um, um, a fellow by the name of Dan Snyder. But Dan Snyder is the uh, owner of the Washington, and I don't even know if we want to say that word anymore because um, because it's sort of like it's it's an, it's the R word now. Just kind of like the same way that the um, that. There's an N word now. There's an R word, and there's been an R word for a long time. They've been debating this uh, this notion, and I'm going to say it, Basil. I'm going to use the word because um, because it's it's important that um, that we say it in order to um, say it in order to spay it. Okay, um, Redskins, the Washington Redskins. Okay, now now not the four skins. They're not the four skins. They're not the five skins. They're not the six skins. Not the 27 and a half skins or the red skins. And uh, Stephen T. Colbert on his um, Colbert Report talked about um, the notion of um, the Redskins and how Dan Snyder, the uh, the current owner of the team, has uh, has uh, come forward and uh, decided that he would, uh, in order to uh, make things make things okay with the. Uh, with the Native American community in America, the different uh, nations, is to um, to make a donation, and also have a, have some dude as a reach out guy to the Indians, uh, the Indian nations, the Native Americans in America, and that guy apparently, um, who shall go nameless because can't think of his name, he apparently was. Um, formerly associated with the, what's called the Bureau, Bureau of Indian Affairs in, um, in Washington. It's, it's a little little portion of the government that, that uh, deals with um, trying, to, uh, trying, to, trying to make it right for the uh, however many millions of um, Native Americans that were murdered and uh, how, to, um, how to keep them happy on the, uh, I guess we can use that word, reservations, because they, they, they still think they use the words. It's, it's Tribal lands that are that are owned, and uh, they they pretty much got pushed onto the, the the crappiest pieces of land around. But but Native Americans, being known as uh, a very resilient people and capable of um, capable of um, actually uh, making good use of um, bad land, and, and well, there's also been um, mineral rights that have uh, that have come up um, and and made. Help them out a little bit, but that's contrary again. That's contrary to um, to the historical uh, perspective of Indian nations. They're, they've not been in the habit of um, pillaging the land and, and digging into it and messing it up. They they live on top of the land. They respect the uh, the sanctity of the land. Um, they they don't um, they don't they don't build basements. The teepees are their um, their nomadic uh, way of uh, traveling from point A to point B, and to further points. And they just um, they just don't they they're just not living the kind of life that, that historically they've led um, as um, as America's uh, as North America's uh, first citizens and continuing as their first citizens. 
which which actually which actually Basil's Basil's uh, giving me the uh, the twitch of the uh, see here's the uh, the third whisker from the bottom on his left hand side and uh, he can take his whisker and he can actually curl it and write in cursive and if you look really really closely you know he does he only does it for a blink of an eye and then it's back to its normal straight shape but he curled me out a, a, a joke he wants me to tell and Basil I think we told that joke a, a few shows ago but you know if you want me to say it again okay I'll do it um, apparently man walks into a store and he overhears two people two dark skinned people brown skinned people speaking what appears to be Spanish to him and he's one of these kind of guys that, uh, let's just say, hates immigrants. Doesn't want anybody coming in the country. If you come in here the way his granddaddy did, and apparently his granddaddy came over on the uh, came over on a boat from Ireland, as the joke goes, he came over from a boat on Ireland, and uh, the same way that um, that my grandparents, um, Basil's been here, but. My grandparents came here from Ireland in the uh, the early 1900s. It was I think 1910. Uh, came across, came on a boat, got here, off the boat. Somebody that was Irish was here. That met them coming off the boat. It already arranged for them to uh, to have a job as caretakers on a on a on a, a mansion in a mansion in uh, in Greenwich, Connecticut. And and there you go. They were there. They were. And all of a sudden, they, they, there was no question about whether they were American citizens. They were here. Um, they became American citizens uh, very easily. And, uh, and that's, that's my heritage on my father's side. So anyway, so the guy's in the store, and he overhears these two, um, these two individuals speaking what appears to be Spanish to him. He walks up to him, and he says, Look, we've been speaking English in America now, in our in this in this country, which is only two hundred and forty some odd years old, but but apparently, you know, he's he's stretching it back a bit back when the English were uh, in charge of a fair amount of the country. French of course had the um the uh, the portion that was um Louisiana on up into the uh, midsection of the country. The Spanish had uh, a fair portion of the southwest. At any rate, so he says to him, says we've been speaking English in this country for 300 years either learn to speak English or go back to Mexico now the two people they look at each other and one of them says to the guy we were speaking Navajo Navajo has been speaking in this country and spoken in this country they speak in Navajo and they spoken in the speaking and they spoken in the speak oh, now I'm having trouble with spoken Spokane. Okay, so he says to the guy, he says, we, we were speaking Navajo. Navajo has been spoken in this country for 3,000 years. Not 300, 3,000 years. So, either start speaking Navajo or go back to England. Now, I know there's some people out there that, that may not understand that, may not care to understand that because because they've got this uh, notion in their mind that that uh, history began yesterday um, but those folks are going to have to come to grips with the fact that that these are hard-working Americans and they deserve to be um, they deserve to be see they want to be citizens they learn to speak the language they learn to speak English so they're bilingual which is uh, you know a lot more that can be said for a lot of folks that are critical of them, who barely speak English too good themselves. So that's it. So there you go. So that's the joke. Now let's um, let's continue on with our um, 16th hour of um, our basilathon. Okay. So we're saving up money for Steve, the Stephen Colbert Defense Fund, and. Um, Stephen had the show last week where he uh, discussed the Redskins uh, situation, the uh, Washington Redskins situation, the football team, and he 
drew a parallel situation to that in order to um, show how filthy and disgusting the notion of having a team named the Redskins is. And a little bit of background, we may have discussed this on a previous show, we may have discussed this on our on earlier portions of our Basilophon because we've been going at it, this is the 16th hour. So, um, the... Um, Wait a second. Hold on. Okay. Water comes in handy. Um, so he draws a parallel. Stephen Colbert draws a parallel to the um, the situation with the Washington Redskins using um, Chinese. And... Uh, Stephen uh, talks about um, the Redskins and uh, Dan Snyder uh, graciously chipping in a couple thousand dollars to help buy a tractor for one of the uh, Native American uh, nations um, out in the Midwest. And uh, he's very, very kind, generous. He's got this guy that used to be part of the Bureau of Indian Affairs and apparently he was charged with and uh, maybe there wasn't enough evidence, but he was charged at any rate. He was charged with ripping off the Bureau of Indian Affairs and Native Americans for something like a million dollars. So the guy's probably not, at least at face value, the best choice of someone to um, to reach out. Can I borrow your, some of your water? Okay. Your water's always better than my water. Oh, okay. Basil says his, his water is always better than my water because Kristen fills his dish with, you can't say the name of the uh, the product, but um, a mineral water, let's say. And my dish, because she knows I like the um, out-of-the-tap water, that it's fine. Um, occasionally they chlorinate it a bit, so you taste a bit of chlorine in the water. Um, like at the beginning of this... Uh, Basilathon. So, um, so Basil, um, so Stephen Colbert draws his parallel, and he uses some uh, some Chinese references that are that are overtly overtly racist. The same way that you could draw a lot of um, references to Indian nations that are clearly overtly racist, and people do this and uh, and think nothing of it. So Colbert does it, and. Uh, Okay, so at any rate, so, um, and, uh, so Colbert's in a little, in a little bit of a, little bit of a, drew some criticism, let's say, for the, um, for the, um, for the whole thing, even though clearly sarcastic, clearly a, a, a point of reference in order to, um, to show up, um, Dan Snyder of the, uh, Washington Redskins for, um, for being, um, in his, in his attempt to being sensitive, being even more insensitive than he was prior to his attempt to being insensitive, of being sensitive. So, um, that enough? Okay. Well, and I thought you'd have some call-ins. You, hold on, okay, well, let's do it, let's, and this, uh, we have to do our, uh, our thanks to our friend Bill Murray for, um, Giving us this uh, this this tip from um, Ghostbusters on how to um, conjure up. So we're conjuring up um, people from the hereafter. And okay, Basil said. Okay, it says it's actually um, it's actually some um, some heroes in Native American history that that are going to comment on the um, on the situation. Okay, well here we go. Thank you, Bill Murray, for your uh, for your 
kind uh, efforts in getting us uh, this notion of doing this. Okay, well, and uh, let's just wait for the... Um, Okay. Happy uh, Basilophon. This is uh, Basil Buddha Cat Presents. Okay, um, okay, Elsie, I, I understand. You know, you, okay, okay, well, tell me about it real quickly and we'll discuss it on. Uh, we'll, we'll add that in on a future show. Okay, okay. Oh, Elsie's got a, a notion. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, um, when we get to our, let's say, number 25 of the Basilathon, we'll, um, we'll um, give you a call back. Thanks. Bye. Okay. 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 Oh, it's a little phone this time. Not the little, little phone, but the little phone. Thank you for calling Basil Buddha Cat Presents. Okay, but well, we're not getting exactly the people that we're looking for. This apparently is um, is Ted Nugent, and he's on catdate.com. And, um, yeah, I understand. I understand that, um, you know, yeah. You already told us this once, and it's it's pretty pretty disgusting, actually. Basley's he's going on about how cat scratch fever... You know the first notion about it because he was he claims he was ten years old the first time he had uh, uh, sex. Can't say romantic interlude. He had sex with um, with with someone else. He was ten years old and um, got this uh, got this cat scratch fever, and then it comes to turn turns turn, turns out that he actually it wasn't with as we had heard a ten year old girl wasn't with a younger girl, wasn't with an older woman, it was actually with a cat. And, uh, no, there's, there's, there's no taking it back, there's no backsies, Ted. You know, you, you know, you should have thought that one through, um, before, um, he, he says he's got to go, he says he's, um, he's trying to, um, trying to, uh, I'm not even going to say that. Okay. I'll tell you after the show, after the, the Silithon is over, I'll, I'll share that one with you, Basil. <laughs> Elsie, um... Yeah, oh, okay. Elsie said it was a, a hoof dial. Thanks. We'll talk to you later, Elsie. We promise. Okay. Well, no, that's not working. Let's try again. No, no. We know it's we know it's not Nick. We know it's Ted. Oh, okay. It's um actually um. We had on the previous show we had uh, we had a call in from um, uh, Ted Cruz Ted Cruz's grandfather um, talking about some some uh, some things and uh, okay you know he says no you got your wrong you got your guy wrong it's, it, it was actually and is actually. Um, Marco Rubio's grandfather, um, Rubio, 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 Rubio del Rubio. So, nope, sorry, not, we got to get this thing squared away, but, uh, thanks for calling. Okay. Maybe this time. Okay, Tweety, is it, um, are you showing up, um, the proper sequence of um, zeros and ones. Yeah. On your call. Okay. Thanks. On your caller ID. Okay. Good. Okay. Tweety, don't wait for Kristen to answer for you. Answer for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Basil Budicat presents. Okay. 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 Here we go. Okay. Um, we have we have on the line from the hereafter. Mm-hmm. 
he um, he says he is um, an Oglawa Sioux. And uh, are you going to make us guess your name? We could. We could try. Okay. 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 I'm going to guess, since of the importance of the uh, discussion we're having here about um, about uh, the Washington Redskins, I'm going to say we're probably speaking with um, Chief Sitting Bull. Okay. Okay. He says, "Yeah." He says, "He says that that's that's who it is." And uh, by the way, he doesn't speak Navajo, but he speaks English quite well. Thank you. Um, he says he actually speaks English better than, uh, and it's a statistical fact that his English quality of, of uh, speaking English is superior to seventy-two um, percent of um, people who speak English in America. Okay, okay. He says, actually, actually, um, the, um, his name is actually not Sitting Bull. It's actually sit, Sitting Bison. And I hear some, I hear some, um, is that zombie activity I hear? Yep. Oh, phew. Got zombie, zombies prowling around the next studio. Okay. So your name is actually Sitting Bison? Okay. All right, well, um, we've actually, we were actually going to take kick a few minute break. We're going to stop from stop the show for a bit, and uh, then we're going to come back. We're going to continue the discussion. Um, if we can um, um, get you on the phone again, uh, Chief Sitting Bison. And uh, onward, two hour, 16 and a half, in a few minutes. This has been Basil Budicat Presents. I'm David Stevenson, Basil's co-host, interpreter, and chief gopher. Basil Budicat, who's been um, not saying a lot on this show, but he's he's he's, he's, a, he's a tired cat. And we'll be back in, uh, in a short while. They say they'd rob your grandma blind on Wall Street, on Wall Street. Fritter her, her away her Medicare on Wall Street. And pharma oil and their pet fox don't care if she lives in a box. So long as they wear platinum jocks on Wall Street, on Wall Street. Meow.